And then we'll talk about it. Mm-hmm. I suppose we're still I will, I, I having won't. bacon sandwiches as well. Bacon sandwiches are the tastiest thing on oh, this earth. Oh, mother. I'd, I'd, you are what you if eat. I, and if, if you I, saw what pigs ate, you, know, you would last, never touch last, another pork chop again. The last thing your dad had before he died was a bacon sandwich. He walked out into the garden and he... And he dropped, dropped down dead. Dropped down, yeah. Uh-huh. Afghanistan's Taliban regime says it will put the British journalist Yvonne Ridley on trial for entering the country illegally. Worryingly, the Taliban have hinted they might claim she was a spy for Western special forces. Today, Yvonne's mother called on the Prime Minister to do more to help her. How many more highs and lows has my daughter Yvonne to endure through her nightmare ordeal? At the Sunday Express, her employers insist she's a bona fide journalist who only entered Afghanistan to report on the humanitarian situation. Fell off a donkey, captured by the Taliban, gave them an undertaking that I would study the Quran if they released me, and against all the odds, they released me. She's had so many prayers said for her, and I'm sure it's the power of prayer that's brought about this happy ending. Well, I hope it is a happy ending. I kept my word, read the Quran, read it again read supporting literature, couldn't believe what I was reading because the Quran makes it perfectly clear, crystal clear, that women are equal in spirituality, worth and education. And as a feminist, I found this quite breathtaking. Do you know the last time I was in this church? Dad's funeral. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I spoke in the pulpit. Yes. I think it was probably the first time they've had somebody wearing a hijab in the pulpit. And have you, have you rude? No, never. When I sent you an email, because I I didn't have the guts to tell you to your face that I'd become a Muslim, you said it was like a, a death in the family and that's what started you going to church again. Well, it didn't really start me going. But I suppose it made me more, it more important to me to go to church because uh, I had to start, start praying for you because I didn't know what you were doing. She was really very ambitious, always wanted to be a journalist. It wasn't a nine to five, Monday to Friday job. It was midnight, Saturday, Sunday, and it didn't matter whether she was on holiday or whatever, wherever she was. If anything cropped up, she would be there, you know, hungry for news. She was very much on the side of the underdog.
If I tell you that since 9-11, uh, more than 1,000 brothers and some sisters have been taken into custody, out of those 1,000 or so that have been taken into custody, about 70 have been charged. And out of those 70 that have been charged, less than half a dozen have actually been convicted under the new terrorism laws. So tonight it's really vitally important to show solidarity with sisters under great stress. And I, I really think that uh, this brand of uh, sisterhood makes Western feminism pale into insignificance. I think I have lost her in it one way because most of her friends don't are disappointed because she's become a Muslim. Or if they do ring up, they'll ask about her and in a disapproving voice. But they, I can tell that they just it's just foreign to them. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illa Allah La ilaha illa Allah Muhammadur Rasulullah Whenever I come back to Tanfield I think I'm the only hijabi in the village Yes and I'm glad you don't go out very much <laughs> Oh ma'am that are you ashamed of me Well I'm not ashamed of you, but um, I can't get used to the idea of you wearing the hijab. But what is it that you're so afraid of? It's not that I'm afraid of anything, Yvonne. It's just that... After July 7 happened, you rang me up and said, get that hijab off now. That's why it's hard to see what is culture and what is Islam. Once you put on the hijab... That's it. You know, you cannot mistake you for anything else. You are a Muslim. Yeah. So you immediately propel yourself into the front lines, short sword fighting for Islam. Absolutely. There's a bit of a pressure on you, really. Yeah. Um, when I, I yeah. cycle to the hospital and back, and if I get really angry with some of the idiot buses, I've caught myself sort of making some rather rude gestures, but because I'm wearing my headscarf, I think, oh no, they're going to think that I'm a Muslim who makes rude gestures. Uh -huh. That's and, it, because everything it, that you're judged, it's not a some mad female cyclist, it's some it's mad, mad Muslim female. Yeah, <laughs> yeah mad bicyclist terrorist. Just because I put on a hijab does not mean I am a second-class citizen, and I refuse to be treated like a second-class citizen. I refuse to dilute my professionalism as a journalist. I refuse to bow down to anyone uh, but God. I refuse to... You would curtsy to the Queen? No, not anymore. Well, that's... <laughs> well you saw that happen when I got that award in yes, the and House of Yes, that was Lord. disgusting. Oh, Mother, this was when I met the Duke of Kent and he went to shake my hand and I went like that and then I said... That was a bit too over the top. How? Well, the man, he put his hand out to shake it and it was an insult to him for you not to shake. You shook hands with Aziz, you shook hands with Arafat. Tariq Aziz and Yasser Arafat, that was before I was a Muslim. And if you notice, I'm not even wearing a hijab. As a new convert, I just try and keep everything as simple as I possibly can. You know, I'm told that it's not Islamic to shake a man's